But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you and please invite your friends and we welcome Muslims to be with us Mohammedans, black stone kissers and I hope Satan did not urinate in their ears as the Sheikh he said in the introduction so they can listen to us. You know there is millions of articles and videos made by Muslims about why Jesus can't be God. And one of the most funny things is the Muslim they say Jesus never said he is God. <laughs> you know, but the, the silly is, why, Je why the Muslim don't ask us where Jesus says, I am the son of God? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why you are focusing about Jesus saying, I am God, when he keeps saying, I am the son of God, which means he is, okay, God's son must be God too. So he, they don't ask you where Jesus says, I am God's son. They say, Jesus never said, I am God, worship me. Okay, and then when you show them verses in the Bible saying that Jesus said so, they will say, hey, we don't accept the Bible anyway. <laughs> what a stupid, silly religion. Um, you know, when you speak to a smart person, you expect intelligence. When you speak to a donkey, you expect mule. So you have to lower your expectation when you speak to, uh, to Allah or to Muhammad. If we go in the Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad, <clears throat> we try to find why Jesus is not God. You will find only one verse in the Quran saying why he is not God. Just one verse. Why? And here you see the stupidity of the one who wrote the Quran. According to the Quran, in chapter 5, verse number 75, Jesus is not God because he eats food. You know what? We have to admit here that God cannot eat falafel. If God eats falafel, he is losing his power. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. So it's like saying to somebody, he is so powerful. If you do something, you know, not in your level, that's mean you are not powerful. Like what? If somebody he can carry a car and then he carry a match a, like a, a matchbox oh no you cannot be the same one you are the same one who carried the car by one hand the one we saw in tv and you are you can carry a book a, a matchbox impossible you see the stupidity have a branches and islamic stupidity of the god of islam is is so so wide and so so wild too because if god cannot eat food that's mean god cannot be god anyway to make it simple for you abdul why we call god almighty because he can do everything so if you say this god he cannot be god if he eats food which means you are claiming that he have needs right this is the point he have needs well all the quran saying allah have needs as an example why Allah, he created you. Start from the creation. 
why Allah created a human and genie, which, you know, I never met one, but my mom, she said to me when I was a kid, you are like a genie. She don't believe in genies anyway. But, you know, she was describing her son in his, uh, what he's acquired. So, uh, according to the Quran, which is supposedly uh, Allah is talking, in chapter 51, verse number 56, it says, I created not, I created not a human and genie except to worship me. Okay, that's mean Allah has needs. He, you know, he created them because he wanted worshippers. And then here you ask yourself, well, why in the world does God, he need people to worship him? And what's wrong? Are you lonely? Are you desperate? So the reasoning of all action of Allah is his needs. So Allah is needy. You know, if you remember, there's a hadith. <clears throat> For those who do not know what hadith mean, it is uh, the, the uh, uh, Mimi, Muhammad, he's speaking, or his, uh, his companion, about him or saying something he said. So we find here, Allah not only he have needs, he is a weirdo. He is what? He is a weirdo. This is, as you see, this is very Sahih Hadith. You know, we will not show you something Muslims will not accept. But anyway, the Muslim will not accept anything as long as it's embarrassing. The Messenger of Allah, which nobody sent him, he said, by the one who is in a hand my soul is where, where you not commit sin, Allah would replace you with people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness. Okay. Translation is not really good. It's stupid. But let us see the different translation. Maybe more honest. Hmm. All right. Uh-huh. This is better here. Abu Huraira, which means the father of the cats, reported... I mean, there is a nice companion. Muhammad's last name is Dogs. And his companion, the father of the cats, looked like we are in the zoo. So Muhammad, he said, by him whose um, uh, uh, hand is in my, my life, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. And he would burden them. So look, even Allah, this is, this is explaining the verse in the Quran, that Allah, he created a human being and genie to worship him, but the worship alone have to come with the begging, like, you know, please forgive me, please. Allah is sick. And if you don't commit sin, Allah will kill you all. Because this is not fun. You know, this God, Allah, is like a, a cartoon maker. And he want to open a cartoon. The second he opened the TV, everybody in the TV says, please Allah forgive us, please Allah forgive us, please. And this is how like he enjoy his day. And if those who work in the program, they are not asking Allah for forgiveness, Allah will destroy them. Especially if they are not committing sin, because this is boring. So even sin is one of the needs of Allah. Are you following with me? Your sin is the nerve and the blood and the food and the reason for Allah to be Allah. Allah will be so upset if you don't commit sin. So here we prove that Allah have a needs. Actually, everything about the God of Islam is about needs. As an example, as an example, as long as we are talking about, you know, committing sin, we just, we just saw here that Allah, he will kill you if you don't commit sin. He will not only kill you, he will destroy you, like, you know, burn you, whatever. He put you in the oven. Yeah, big oven, so, you know. Uh, the Quran says, uh, who forgives sin beside Allah? Nobody. 
only Allah forgives him. Okay, is forgiving sin is from the needs of Allah? We will connect the dots together. <clears throat> we open the yellow pages of Muhammad and we find the Quran is speaking about sin is all over you know and supposedly you know when you read the Quran you think that Allah he is against sin but we just showed, showed you Muhammad saying uh, if you don't commit sin Allah will, will destroy you so sin is a necessity, necessity for the entertainment of Allah but in the Quran it says in case you do not know what the Quran, if you are new here, Quran is a collection of stupid stories of the ancient fairy tales, sunset in murky water. Allah claimed that He created you from the you know the sperm coming from the backbone, and women she have a sperm coming from her ribs, and uh, yeah, you know uh, Allah He found where the sun set, and Allah He found where the sun rise, and Allah He claimed that. You are created from a sperm which became a congealed blood. So it's a, just a silly, stupid book. But here to connect the dots with what the topic we are speaking of now for sin, chapter 3, verse number 135, it says, And who forgives sin beside Allah, except Allah? Who forgives sin? This is a good question. Who forgives sin except Allah? Can Muhammad forgive sin? The Muslim, they will say no. Shia, they say no. Okay. All the branches of the Muhammadan, they say no. Only Allah can forgive sin. Then if we ask the same question about Jesus, can Jesus forgive sin? Then we will find that there is verses, many verses in the Bible speaking about Jesus saying, go and your sin is forgiven. As example, chapter 7, verse number 48, or in Luke, or Matthew 9, uh, uh, 5, where he said to them, which is easier? Which one is easier? To say your sin is forgiven or to say go and, you know, uh, pick up your, your, your bed and, and walk. So, talk is cheap. Muslims, they claim that Allah, only Allah can forgive sin. But Allah cannot say to you, carry your bed and walk. <laughs> Allah cannot say to you, see and you see. Allah, he said to Muhammad three times, read, still Muhammad he was dumb and stupid and still he cannot read. This looked like the miracles of Allah doesn't work with Muhammad because he was so silly and so stupid. So talk is cheap. I can say your sin is forgiven. Does that make me God? But the one who says your sin, he said to the Jews, which one is easier to say? Your sin is forgiven or carry your bed and walk? Which one? So when the Bible mentioned that Jesus, he forgives sin in many places, Jesus doing the act of God, which only God can do, and the Quran confirmed that. Can your God forgive sin? Can he? Prove it. Because as you see, the one who can forgive sin, he can order the one who cannot walk to walk, and he walked. And one of the theft of Muhammadan is that the Quran claimed that all the miracles Jesus has is from Allah anyway. But Allah cannot do what Jesus can do, but Allah is the one who gave him the miracle. <laughs> There's one of you, he sent me a hadith saying, that the prophet, there was, one, there was a person, he was sick or he was injured and the prophet touched him or something, or he makes a prayer for him, and then the guy, he was healed. But all of us, we knew that Muhammad himself, he died by sickness. Uh, he was sick all the time, and not only that, even he would die by poison too. If we go here, we will find, let's open different page. Too much junk in the screen, junk of Muhammad. 
you will see that Muhammad he died. This hadith actually proven many things to us that Muhammad is always sick. The Prophet Aisha is saying, in his element which he died, he used to say, Oh Aisha, I feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar at this time, and I feel as my orta is being cut off from that poison. Here you will see many things about this person. He used to say he's always in pain, his God cannot heal him. His God is just watching, he cannot do anything, you know. And Muhammad, he cannot do anything to himself. On the other hand, we see that Jesus, wherever he walk, he is doing miracles. People are healed, the blind see, the dead come from the grave, even the Quran, the stupid Quran confirmed those stories. So instead of Allah giving us a reason that Jesus cannot be God, like an example, maybe you should say he was a sinner. We find that Islamic books confirm that Jesus has zero sin. As an example, the hadith of intercession. The hadith of intercession, which is speak about that every nation will go to their prophet. And you will see that all prophets commit sin except Jesus. So the Quran failed to give us that Jesus is not God because he is a sinner. Because if he's a sinner, well, that will make him, obviously, he cannot be God. But is Jesus holy in the Quran? Yes. Chapter 19, verse number 19, it says that Jesus is holy. Not only that, he is the only one he being called the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And we mentioned in the previous study in the other channel about the Bible study, if you remember, about in the beginning it was the Word and the Word was God, you know, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So uh, Jesus is the Word of God and therefore Jesus, you know, the Word of God is always holy. You know, the Word of God would never be unholy. He is holy because of his nature as a holy person. You know, he is, everything about him is holy, whatever it is. So Jesus is born of who? We ask the Muslims, born of who? They will say to you, uh, it's God miracle. So he is born of the miracle of God. Is the miracle of God holy? Have you ever seen a miracle of God is dirty? <laughs> you know, when, when, I, when I hear Muslims uh, uh, argument about Jesus, I see a bunch of kids. Uh, they are busy trying to keep their diaper inside their pant, so we don't see it. When the Quran says that the angels came to Mary and they said to her, they announced to her that you will have a holy son. Was Muhammad a holy son? The Quran confirmed that Muhammad was a very bad person and he was a sinner. To the point Allah, he cannot forgive his sin, to the point Allah is asking other Allah, which is very funny, that may Allah forgive your sin, Muhammad. I never heard really of somebody, he is his God, and you know for sure the Muslims, they try always to give you different translation from what it says there, in Arabic it says dhambaka, which means sin, and if you change the translator you will see the word sin disappear. Why? Because they are ashamed of having a prophet who is zero. He has zero, zero holiness. And they, yet they call him the holy prophet. I don't know how that works. So we just saw in the Quran that Jesus is holy. Muhammad is a sinner. And not only that, Jesus in the Bible, he forgives sin. He, go, he said to you, go and your sin is forgiven, which is an action of God. And Muhammad, he's God Allah. He's asking another Allah to forgive his sin. And wishing, he's not only asking his wish, that may Allah, that Allah may forgive your sin. Who is talking Allah? Isn't it? This is funny. That the one is talking is Allah, yet he's asking other Allah may forgive your sin. How stupid you are. So you notice that Muhammadan, because of their city God, they could not find something negative about Jesus. And the only thing they found that he eat food. How stupid is that? And here you notice something stupid more. Muhammad, he inserted the mother of Jesus in the story. What? Why? Because the Quran failed to understand the Trinity. Have you ever heard of a God? You see, 
ask any Muslim, they will say to you, ask them, what the, what the Christian Trinity here? They will say, the Christian Trinity, they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay, wonderful. So how come Muhammad was so stupid? He have different Trinity. According to the city Muhammad, the Christian believe that Jesus and Mary and Allah is the Trinity. <laughs> This is why he's mentioning here. <laughs> that him and his mother, they eat food. Uh, and in different verse in the Quran, we find the, the Quran uh, saying something more silly. Very silly, as usual. You know, what you expect? Certified idiot Muhammad. Borat. To confirm that what we are saying here is true, that Muhammad, he claimed that Jesus and his mother is the Trinity beside Allah. We go to different verse in the Quran, we find this. The God of the Abdul Muhammad saying in chapter 5, verse 116, Hey Isa, did you say to your people to worship me and my mother? <laughs> so here we notice that the God of Islam did not even know the basic of the belief of the Christians. What worship me and my mother as God? All Christian churches, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, they believe that the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So where you got this is from, idiot? In different places in the Quran, you will find them Muhammad or Allah, Aka Allah, Aka Muhammad, saying something more stupid and more silly. What is that? You just said to us that the Trinity is uh, 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 Maryam and Jesus and Allah beside Allah. So those are the three here we go, they mention. Jesus, Mary, Allah, the verse is so clear. Then we go to the stupid book of the Quran, we will find this. Try not to laugh. Try your best not to laugh. In chapter 5, verse number 17, and chapter 5, verse number 72, Allah repeat himself, very stupid again, saying something very funny, that the Christians, they say, that the Messiah is Allah. Are you stupid? Do the Christian worship the Messiah beside Allah or they think he is Allah? <laughs> because there's a huge difference. <laughs> so in one verse, in chapter 5, verse 72, it says, they disbelieve, they are kufar, those who say the Messiah, the son of Maryam, is Allah. So what they say? They say he's Allah. So what we will do with this one? Chapter 5, verse 116, it says that they worship the Messiah and his mother beside Allah. Or even instead of Allah. So who is the third? Where is, where is the Trinity? If the Messiah is Allah according to the Christians, who is the second person in the Trinity and who is the third person? Here we go. Now we have Allah saying that the Christian believe that the Messiah is Allah. Okay. Who is the second person? So look what happened now. The Messiah cannot be God because he eats food. Allah can be God because he doesn't even understand what we believe in. <laughs> Somebody bring me Allah for five minutes so we can explain to him that we Christian we don't believe in what he is saying. That is a stupid. Secondly, we don't believe in Allah. Number three, the Christian they do not believe that the Son is the Father. We don't. If this is what he meant, we don't. We don't believe that the Son is the Father. We don't.
So we found that Allah, he cannot forgive sin. We found that Allah, he loved to kill you if you don't commit sin. We love that Allah created you because he needed you to sin, which means he have needs. And the whole point of the Quran saying Jesus eat food, claiming that he have needs. But you forgot that Jesus can walk in water, Jesus can heal the blind, Jesus, you know, what kind of need this person he have, who can do things nobody can do. If I can raise people from death, what is my need exactly? If death cannot take me, if I have a power over death, which means I am conquering the nature of the man, I am destroying the nature around him, which can, or the element which will cause him to die, what food mean? The funny is, we have a chapter here, the chapter we are reading from is called Al-Ma'idah. Al-Ma'idah means the table. And if you ask the Muslim, what is this about? They will say to you that Jesus, he did feed thousands of people from five sandwiches. <laughs> or seven sandwiches, some story says. Allah, he sent him seven sandwiches. Each one of them have a whale. <laughs> In a whale. I mean, come on, make it falafel. So the Bible says fish, Allah make it whale. I mean, it's the same. The, the, the difference is only the size. So here you notice how stupid the Quran is. You make a chapter saying Al-Ma'idah that Jesus can feed thousands of people. Muhammad, he could not find, if, if he himself, they used to bring him lizard to eat. And he look at the fingers of the lizard. He says, oh, I cannot eat them. Those are the Jews. They said to him, Prophet, why? because they have five fingers <laughs> so according to the city muhammad this is inspiration from god my friend only person who is inspired by god he think the jews are lizard because the lizard have five fingers i mean who can come with this except a prophet of allah nobody nobody my friend then we go and see the needs do allah come down as a need Yes, Allah come down every, every, you know, every night. Yanzulu Rabbuna. Allah, He come down every night. Oh, this is about Muhammad taking shower in the, in the dogs, jacuzzi, the dogs. Forget about it. We don't want this one. Let us go to the front one. And this is a miracle, by the way. Where Muhammad taught by his God that sleeping or you know washing with dead dogs, women blood from period and garbage is not bad and nothing make the water impure. This is science and Allah is talking. So what we can say? No comment. But look here, Allah cannot even hear the Muslims. He have to come down every day in the third part of the night. And there's tons of Muslim videos, by the way, saying Allah, he come down, literally. Yes, he come. Actually, I found a video by a very well-known sheikh. Big, big guy, you know, not like those Abdur in YouTube. Al-Allama al-Doktor Salih al-Fuzan. Al-Allama, you know, Al-Allama mean like this, the, the, the highest uh, scholar. Like, big shot, he's full of fort. And they ask him about this hadith about Allah will sit with Muhammad on the throne. Do Allah sit? Why he sit? Is the throne of Allah physical? Yes. Who sit with Allah? Muhammad. Muslims, they associate Allah with Muhammad. They are kuffar. They are the one who don't believe in Tawheed. Actually, Tawheed means unification, not oneness. Okay, even that word is wrong. They are the one who don't believe in the oneness of God because if you believe in the oneness of God, why God? And he's just a stupid prophet. He's just a stupid, you know, whatever you want to say about him, he is just no one for God. Why God want to sit with his prophet on the throne? So the question is, Jahid rahimahullahu ta'ala min an nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaq'udu ala al-arsh wa anna thalika huwa al-maqam al-mahmud hal yasih minhu shay wa jazakumullahu khairan hada hada sahahahu ibn jarir wa ghayrih min al-a'imah yeah it is sahih it's sahih the prophet and allah will they will sit in one chair <laughs> so we will go and measure things together if the reason that jesus cannot be god because he eat food well allah he sit in the chair 
And this is the act of everybody, you know. And as you see, he sat in the same chair with Muhammad. He sat with a human being next to him. And here you see that Muhammad obviously is copying what is written in the Bible about Jesus. This guy, he is trying to replace Jesus, as simple as that. He is evil, he is satanic, he is perverted man. And yet they claim that he is a prophet. So we find that the Quran says that Jesus is holy. Jesus, he can do what nobody can do. Jesus can forgive sin. And the Quran confirmed nobody can forgive sin beside Allah. And then the Muslim, they say to us, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Now, if we show them where God, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me, they will accept? No. And they will not only say that, they will say, where Jesus says, I am God. But they will never ask you where Jesus says, I am son of God. <laughs> if we go to John 8, and we are reading the Aramaic, which is more uh, uh, authentic, or let us say, close to the, uh, the correct meaning, uh, Jesus said to them, spoke to them again, and said, I am the living God, the light of the world. Whoever follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall find light of life. But Jesus never said, I'm God, worship me. Actually, each time Jesus, he says, I am, I am is, he is saying, I am Yahweh. This is what the word and this is how God says to Moses, I am. A new, a new written law is written. The testimony of two men is true. I am the living God. I who testify about myself and my father. You know, how many times Jesus says my father? How many times he's, that, that, that it says I am God's son? How many times he says I am he? The Muslims still they insist that nowhere Jesus says I'm God. And then, you know, Jesus, he continued talking to them. And then he, you know, when he asked, when he asked the Jews about what you think about the Christ. What do you think about Christ? They said, well, he is God's son. The Jews says that. Sorry, he's, he's David's son. Then Jesus, he said, well, if he is... David's son, so then how David called him my Lord. My God! If he is the son of David, a Muslim might say, well, in the genealogy of Jesus, it says he is from David. This is by birth. But Jesus confirmed that he is a son of no man, actually. That's what the Bible, all of it teach. Even the Quran says that Mary, she is a virgin woman. What say you about, about the Christ? What do you say? The Jews, they say it. But Jesus, he have different opinion from what the Jews understand. If he is David's son, then how David call him Lord? Muslims, they read the Bible, and they try to find any way to escape the words of Jesus. They will say to you, Jesus says, my father is greater than me. Well, the father, he is the father. So what's wrong with that? My father, he just said, my father. He did not say, you. He's talking about his father. And the reason he said that, because simply he is coming in the flesh of the human being. That's why the Bible says, for God, he humbled himself. He took the image of a man. He humbled himself. So when we see Jesus, we see the humble image of God. So the desperate Muhammad and they could not find where Jesus cannot be God except saying he eat food. This is what you have. This is the best you can come with. Can't you try better? At least prove to us that he is a sinner. At least try to prove to us, but this is against the Quran. They cannot do that. In Matthew 22, we find the story where Jesus, he said, who is he? 
But as the Pharisees were assembled, Yeshua, or Yeshua in Arabic, not Isa, we don't know who is this name, Isa, asked them and said, what are you saying about the Messiah? So he's asking them about himself. And the question is very simple. Who is son is he? I mean, why this is important to ask who is son is he? You know, what a big deal, you know? What is that? No, there is a big deal. Jesus is asking the question because he knew that they have a wrong answer. They were saying to him, well, the son of David, and you know, remember, David is a, like a great king for the Jews, like every Jew is proud about David. He said to them, and how did David, by the Spirit, and look here, by the Spirit, call him the Lord Jehovah's, for he said, the Lord Jehovah says to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I place your enemy under your feet. So if Jesus, and then he continues saying, our Lord the Messiah, glory to him saying, if therefore David call him the Lord Jehovah, how oh, he is his son. The followers of the dummy Muhammad, who he have a God is a dummy more than him, who he claimed that man is sperm coming from the backbone and the sun set in murky water, who he claimed that a human being is created just to commit sin, otherwise he will kill him, destroy him. A lonely, funny, st stupid, silly God. Stop asking the Christians, Jesus never said in the Bible, he is God, worship me. And there's tons of verses about Jesus worshipped, and Jesus never said, don't worship me. But we know that it doesn't matter what we show you in our, 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 our Bible, you will say it's corrupt, but in the same time, it takes us two seconds to prove that the Bible confirmed in the Quran. And even Muhammad, he took an oath on the Torah. Still, you will find the Muslims saying, no, your Bible is corrupted, okay? It's corrupted. But your stupid Quran says the opposite. Which one is more stupid? Which one is more stupid, you or the Quran? Who is telling the truth in this religion? When your stupid Quran says, confirming what is with you, what is with you, Christians, confirming how stupid this cult is and how fake they are when they claim things is even against their book just to win an argument which is lost already? And I say to the Muhammad, and we don't worship Jesus because he said, I'm God. Anyone can say, I'm God. Anyone. Anyone can say, worship me. We worship Jesus for the following, you idiots, for he is holy, for he is godly, for his nature of God, for he is being without sin, for he cannot do what no one can do, for he can resurrect people from death, for he can forgive sin, for he can order demons and he can control them, not like your prophet who was by, bewitched by some hair. Can you bewitch Jesus? You cannot. But you can be witch Muhammad, according to your stupid religion. And the idea of bewitching, according to Islam, is satanic, which means Muhammad is under the control of Satan. And that to explain the satanic act of Muhammad. And Muhammad, he was bewitched, according to Muslims, to the point he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not. This is how much this man was mental. The Muslim, they tried to explain the stupidity of Muhammad and the mental illness by saying he was bewitched. But even by saying that, you destroy your religion and you prove that your God even cannot protect his prophet from being bewitched. And then later we find that Muhammad, he received satanic verses. And then Allah, he is going to filter the satanic verses which Satan, he gave to Muhammad. Look how stupid this religion is. Was Satan able to put satanic verses in the mouth of Jesus? No. Satan, he tried everything with Jesus. Jesus said to him, it's written, you cannot tempt or try your God. I am your God, you cannot try me. 
but Muhammad can be controlled by the devil. Actually, even Muhammad, he claimed that the devil gave him command and he claimed that he have a Muslim devil. Who in the world gonna believe in such a garbage? That there's Satan who is a Muslim. And the Satan command Muhammad to do good. How far stupid he can go. He command me to do good, the devil, Muhammad said. Do we need even more proof that Muhammad is of the devil? Read carefully. There's none among you whom is not attached to among him, the genie, the devil. They, the companion, said, Allah, messenger, would you too? Thereupon he said, yes, but Allah helped me against him. So I'm saved from him, from his hand. And he does not command me, but for good. Muhammad received command from who? From the devil. And this man, Muhammad, claimed that the devil he have is a good devil. <laughs> I like that. Have you ever heard of a good devil and bad devil? Welcome to Islam, you know, because this is Muhammad devil. He's cute. You know, he's like, you know, puffy and nummy and yummy. You know, he's a good devil. You know, Allah helped him about him. So Muhammad now, he trained his devil. So the devil come and sit in my lap. Okay, you are a good devil now. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. I like your tail. I like your tail. You're lovely. So now the prophet, he is admitting that he received commands from the devil. And he gave him good commands. So Muslims, I leave you with the command of the devil. Enjoy it. For us, we, we, we follow the command of the Holy Jesus. The command of the Son of God. The command of the living God who even in your cult, he is living now in heaven while your prophet is routing under the ground. When they did not bury Muhammad for three days, three nights, hoping that he is the same as a Christ, he stink and his fingers became green and blue and his belly became full of fart and he was farting. And the hadith says that Ibn Abbas, he said, bury your friend. He stink as all a human stink. So you stink, Muhammad? We agree with the hadith. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you learned something good. And if you are a person who cares for what we do, as you see, you Christians, many of you are useless. You don't deserve Christ. You don't share videos. You don't even make comment. Many of you are numbers. And the Lord, he says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. Are you doing the will of the Father to go and teach and preach the gospel? Are you doing the will of the Father to bring Muslims to Christ? Or you are just numbers watching YouTube and having fun? Which one is you? You tell your Lord, not me. Thank you. God bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. And I don't care really how many people they support what we do. You should care for your salvation. For the Lord, he says, from their fruits, you shall know them. We are not silly people who believe if you say 100 times, Bismillah, you go to heaven. That doesn't work in Christianity. This is only for the slow, silly-minded. God is not a stupid. You say to him, Bismillah, 100 times. That is so stupid. Our God is real. And the real God, he wants real fruits. Where is yours? God bless you, and see you soon. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative 
has holes in it. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified <laughs> and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. <laughs>